Awesome. Well, uh, welcome to Coffee and Cargo. We're happy to have you guys here today. Um, we see that there's a bunch of new viewers this month, so we're really excited for you guys to sit, listen um, for some things we have to say today. And welcome to all those um, old viewers as well, too. We're, we're happy to have you again. Um, we have some good topics that we're going to discuss today. We have some new polls that we're going to ask you guys as viewers to see kind of your thoughts on these topics as well um, and, and kind of go off of that as well, too. So to do some introductions, my name is Rachel. Um, I work in the marketing department. Emily Smith also is our project manager who does a lot of our content writing with the marketing team as well. Uh, we have Justin Engelmeyer here. He's our vice president at Interlog. And then Benjamin Schwingle, he's our international operations director. So Ben and Justin are gonna lead these conversations today um, and, and kind of lead the conversation. So to get into it, um, our agenda for today, we're going to kind of touch on some delays in China. There's a Shenzhen situation with a couple of days in lockdown that we're going to kind of discuss, as well as some port updates and port conditions going on kind of in Long Beach, LA area. Um, and then we are going to get into some strikes that are that have had that had happened and ones that are potentially going to happen just to kind of show the impact of them and for you guys to be aware of the situations that, that could come about with that. Um, and then we'll tie it with some current events. Uh, Zim is launching their first ever, first ever Southeast Asia to US East Coast Service Express. We'll kind of touch on that, as well as a massive evergreen ship got stuck at the Chesapeake Bay, um, which, which we'll touch on that as well too. Um, but while you guys are listening in today, we, we do have a QA and a at the very end. So if there are any questions that come up that you'd like to ask our experts, uh, please get them in there. We'll, we'll try to reach as many as we can today. Um, but to get into it, Justin, Ben, I'll, I'll hand it off to you guys. Perfect. Well, good morning, everyone. Rachel, all right. So the first uh, thing that we're going to discuss here is uh, the, the shutdown over in Shenzhen due to COVID last, uh, what was it, a good week or two ago. Um, and basically what happened was it's not so much that we couldn't move freight down to Yantian and out of there, but realistically what happened was the, the actual factories were shut down in Shenzhen. So it really was dependent upon your factory, whether or not they were shut down. Some were, some weren't. Um, but aside from that, we were still able to move cargo out of there. Ben, you have, it, was there much else besides that? It seemed to be relatively minor unless your factory was shut down. No, just the ambiguity in the beginning led to some concerns, switched bookings. But everyone stayed optimistic that, like previous actions in China, these COVID reactions tend to resolve themselves pretty quickly, especially when cargo and, and movement of merchandise out of China is on the line. And as you touched on, there were district-specific lockdowns, so maybe your factory is in the Shenzhen region or the Guangzhou region, but would have been outside of the perimeters of the lockdown. So that you actually wouldn't have experienced any disruption in the flow of your cargo. Sure, and, and let's discuss a little bit more about the overall picture of China coming to the US now. Um, we have some, some photos here right now showing um, the circles are, are actually vessels that are engated and being worked on. And over on the left side of the screen here, it shows it's blown out a little bit. Um, and so it shows the congestion in Long Beach, but that again, that was back in 2021 or uh, December of 2021. And you can see all the other vessels floating around out there waiting to be engated. And now there's not nearly as many. Um, keep in mind though, that the vessels have slowed down their transit time on getting to Long Beach. So Ben, let's discuss how this is actually affecting our people. There's, there's some stuff that's not the best news. The transit time to Long Beach is actually similar to what it was back in December. However, there seems to be more predictability. So if we can, let's go over from the time of booking. If we're booking something today for the customer, how far out until it actually departs? So it used to be a week or five or six days. How far out from that perspective? And then you're still looking at, I believe we discussed around the mid twenties or so for it to actually get um, offloaded into a port into Long Beach here. But then there is a little bit more predictability on the back end of that, whether it's getting on a rail or 
whether it's just you're trucking it somewhere inland and from, from Long Beach. So can you touch on those for us a little bit, Ben? Sure, let's start at the, the origin side. Yeah. Um, the last 30 days since Chinese New Year ended, this spring we're going to see regular bookings in about 10 days from the time it's requested to when it departs. Could be a little later, it depends on what rate your market you're shopping in, whether it's the, the spot market, the premium rates, or the larger contract rates that have to be placed five weeks in advance and subject to rolling. Um, now the trans Pacific transit time, as you touched on, it's slower because what these pictures are demonstrating is the efficiency of birthing schedules. The ships arrive according to their certain schedule, whereas back in December, they were rushing across in their normal transit time of 16, 18, 20 days, and then waiting for a week. Now they have a birthing up schedule or an appointment, so they make it here. And typically they only have like a one to three day window of delay. And that builds into the predictability for both the truckers and the transfer to the railways, helping for a smoother forecast of arrival all the way to the, the end. It's constantly very important. Sure. So you know, it's not all doom and gloom. It's not perfect by any stretch yet. Um, the rates are still a lot higher than what people are comfortable with, but it is softening a little bit. There seems to be some relief where we have a little more control over things. Um, we're able to predict the departures a little bit better. We're able to predict when it's going to arrive once it's been offloaded into Long Beach a little bit better than we were before. It's not a total up in the air wild guess. Um, and, and so as long as we're moving in that trend, things are getting a little better. Um, and, and that's, I think, what, what I'd like to announce and say that we're, we're seeing here. Um, would you agree with that wholeheartedly, Ben? Yeah, I would. And I'd also like to add that although we're at eight, nine times, ten times the um, cost of shipping than we were three years ago, we're still in the same annual cost trends dropping downward, softening after Chinese New Year, probably until about May or June, and then a slow steady rise through the summer. Um, unless some of the issues we touch on later, like the, the longshoreman strike um, come to fruition, and then there'll be sharper increases in the rates. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's yet to be known. So uh, there, that's not something that I guess we can worry about at this moment. Um, it, it seems like we're, we're starting to level out a little bit. Um, who knows where that's going to come into play. But at the moment, this is where we're at. Rachel, what's, uh, what do we have up next here? I believe it's what happened to, for the UP or CP. Yeah. Oh, your um, poll. Yeah, we have a poll that will be appearing on your screen here shortly. Um, so please take a, a moment to fill that out. Um, if you're shipping out of China, we just want to know um, what your two biggest frustrations um, currently are. So we'll give you a few moments to fill that out. And in addition to that, if you guys have any questions so far throughout this webinar, um, please make sure to put that in the Q&A se section at the end. Um, we will be um, talking about those. But I'll give you guys a few more seconds to fill this poll out. And let's see. All right. So it looks like the top two are lack of visibility and transparency and congestion. Um, Justin, Ben, do you guys have any tips, advice, or solutions for viewers regarding this? Sure. Uh, to start on the congestion issues, um, I, I think it really depends upon where your cargo is destined in the U.S., um, there are different options depending upon where it is inland to go in through a different port or possibly to transload versus sending it on the rail. Um, and that, that can speed things up and add a little bit more um, consistency or, or give us the opportunity to um, ensure when it's going to get there. Um, aside from that, th th those are your real options within there. Ben, your thoughts with uh, what was the other one that you had? Visibility and transparency? Yeah. Yes. And I would say that comes down to communication with um, your freight forwarders and then with their vendors, the ocean carriers and the truckers. So like 
in that picture with the Los Angeles terminals, the number of ships out at sea still, there should be better communication now because for many months now, we're scheduling truckers two weeks or more in advance. And now that there's a narrow window of the birthing, the unloading of the vessel, we can more accurately predict which truckers need to grab which containers and deliver. So anyone still having issues with visibility like they did months ago should um, push their forwarders for that quicker communication. Usually there's some online portals. I know we have our tracking and tracing portal uh, available for anyone to log in and see current shipments or past shipments and record the, uh, the progress of their shipments. And we also send out those reports, the PDF reports twice a week too, Ben, for, for our customers that don't want the online portal. But yeah, yeah the, I guess what you're touching on is the communication and what's in the portals, what, what we're showing on our online tracking and tracing should be more accurate. They should have a little bit more of a pulse onto what, what's going on at the moment. Right. And then visibility just, conditions are improving at a lot of rail ramps and seaports, but there still needs to be communication about the delays that should be expected. And of course, a lot of customers, they have to adjust their warehouse schedules for a lot of different containers, not just the one that we're handling for them. So communication both ways about their schedule and how that's gonna be affected and match it up right. Sure, perfect. All right, so now we're moving on, Rachel, here to the CP. They had a, a strike a labor dispute the past week, um, and Vancouver has already been congested, not quite to the extent that Long Beach has been. But um, aside from that, I mean, it was a week long. It could have delayed your, your progress if your shipment was going on that by a week. But aside from that, in the aftermath of um, getting things moving again, it's it should be done with by now, correct, Ben? I agree. I mean, there's some disruption, but not terribly noticeable. The CP stretches from Vancouver through to Montreal and then comes down into the U.S. When so like Chicago, Kansas City, Rochester, New York. So they would have been affected and it's resolved now. But I think it's interesting just from a historical context of what a railway strike looks like Canada. Typically that means they um, will shut down for a certain number of days during a week. Um, so not, not the informal slowdown that we're about to discuss when longshoremen want to force uh, the negotiations their way without formally striking. Yeah, and, and, and that's this next topic here, and I think we need to touch on it lightly and um, be sure to note that so the, the last time this happened, the, the, long, the contracts with the longshoremen on the U.S. West Coast expires July 1st. The last time this happened, I believe, was 2014. And those of us that were in the industry back then remember what a headache and nightmare it was at the time. Um, and, and that lasted, a, I don't remember exactly how many months, but, but it really was jammed up and the worst we'd seen in quite a long time. Um, <laughs> pales in comparison to what we've seen during COVID, but um it, it was a nightmare back in 2014 but with that being said i i hope that people remember that time and i don't think it was really good for any party involved at the moment um you know hopefully the longshoremen are, are able to negotiate what they need but um again this is happening in july and you know i other than mentioning it and saying that it could cause significant delays or there could be problems um, it also could just go through and, and the contracts could be signed. But, you know, aside from that, Ben, do you have something else you'd like to touch on with that? Here's a little more detail. Back in 2014, they started negotiations a month before the contract expiration. But the negotiations went on for nine more months beyond that point. And this year, they're already attempting to start the negotiations now. So a few months further in advance. Well, we'll see. I do expect, especially closer to the July 1st deadline, you're going to see longshoremen slowdowns. In 2014, they were moving uh, a quarter 
of the speed, I mean, in unloading containers at just a quarter of the normal speed to emphasize their significance in the whole supply chain. But that lingered on for 10 months. And as you mentioned, and well aware, there was the locked out for 10 days. And it all just finally resolved in 2015. Something to be aware of, perhaps plan around, maybe, we'll, and we will obviously stay in tune with this and update people in the coming months. Something to mark your calendars for. Yeah, I, I think we'll know a little bit more next month and then we'll, for, for the April session and then more coming in May and then even more in June um, as to whether or not this is really gonna impact us. It's just something to be aware of at the moment. Um, Hopefully they work it all out, but you never know. Well, a sore point for them is the amount of automation that's trying to be forced into the terminals. And, and we know why, because of the, long, um, the Los Angeles congestion that could have been eased with uh, more automation this last year. Well, only a fraction of maybe about 25%. I think it's three out of 13 Los Angeles terminals have an automation program. And that would replace a lot of these dock workers that are negotiating the contracts right now. So. Yeah, and so people get a, a better understanding of what Ben's talking about here is they're, they're suggesting uh, to automate the processes um, that would remove up to 80% of the, the staff that they currently need. So it is a huge deal for the labor workers that are there. Um, that obviously won't happen overnight, but that is uh, what they're they're discussing and that they're working over. So, you know, who knows exactly how that's going to work out, but um, they are talking about removing quite a bit of workers out of there. Rachel, you want to move on to the next one? Yep. Um, so we do just have a quick poll kind of based off those strikes. Um, we just want to kind of hear from our audience. Is this something that you guys want us to um, keep you guys updated on a month to month basis. Um, just kind of want to hear from the viewers too, so we can make sure to keep adding it as each month as we find out more information. So I'll give you guys a few moments to fill that out. Perfect. And then we will be going on to current events here soon. But before we do, um, if you guys have any questions on any of these topics or something regarding your current situation, uh, get it in our Q&A. We're going to get to that qu pretty quickly here soon. So we want to get as many questions in there so we can kind of go through them quickly um, for you guys. All right. So going on to the next slide. So current events, um, I know I touched on this earlier in the webinar, but Zim is launching their first ever Southeast Asia to U.S. East Coast Express service. Um, this is going to be a bi-weekly service, but uh, they think in the coming months it will become a weekly service, which will be great to see. Um, and then we also, a couple of weeks ago, had a huge evergreen ship get stuck at the Chesapeake Bay. Um, luckily, it hasn't been, it had, there's no injuries or damage or pollution that has been caused by this, um, and it hasn't blocked any other navigation or vessels as well, but it is a massive ship that got stuck. It is about 12,000 TEUs capacity ship. So it is a pretty big ship that is a China to US route. Um, we think in the next week or so it should be um, resolved and it should be heading its way to Norfolk and New York to then um, empty all the, the containers off that ship. So it is kind of a huge thing that happened. Luckily it hasn't blocked any other uh, vessels. So hopefully that can get resolved here shortly, but we will move on and get into our Q&A. Um, I see there's some questions coming in. So Emily, I'll let you take it over. Sounds good. Thank you, Rachel. All right. So if you guys, again, as Rachel said, have any last minute questions, make sure you guys get them in there now. Um, ben and Justin, um, someone says they're having some huge issues with their shipments out of Italy. Um, why is it taking them six weeks to get a booking? Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, and Ben, I'll let you touch on it because I believe from what I, what I know about it is that the vessels have just uh, reallocated their uh, assets to the, the China US lanes versus, or, or even China Europe lanes versus Europe to US. But if you- That's right, that, that's a good summary of the why. Um, and we're intimately involved with 
a lot of Italian imports and those from the Mediterranean. And the similar experience is happening out of Northern Europe, but not to the same degree. The carriers are overbooked and it's often heard that we have to roll containers to the next vessel, whether it's MSC, CMA, Hepic, Lloyd's, and you name them, coming out of Italy to the United States, they're past capacity because they are not allocating the number of containers or ship space in the transatlantic. It's just not as lucrative for carriers as routes from Asia to Europe or Asia to the US. But the, the name of the game there is cast a wide net, use multiple carriers and plan far in advance. A lot of European manufacturers are very good at, and it's springtime, but it was, a lot of us know late summer is a, a vacation shutdown in Europe. So while it's not here yet, we are here talking about things to look out for. So we're talking about a six week heads up between the date you're, you want to make a booking to one of your sales, plan that far in advance for your cargo readiness. And and have a, a contingency plan. We often see six weeks is extreme, but four weeks. If you have a, a carrier set for collection four weeks from now, have another ready in five, just in case something comes up. Zim doesn't have containers available, a vessel rolls, you have a backup option. That's the name of the game in Italy and a lot of the Mediterranean countries right now. If there's something urgent to get out, and we're always looking for contingency plans. You can truck it from Northern Europe to Rotterdam, Amsterdam, somewhere like that. Increases the cost significantly, but it does cut down time on machinery. And I say machinery because it's Northern Italy's bread and butter to, to projects in the United States that have to get off the ground. Right. Thanks, Ben. What's going on in Italy? Right, and, well, and not, but not also to forget too, Ben, that as it's coming into the U.S. and especially if you're inland, to not forget about transloading um, and trucking inland if if you need it more urgently. So. Right. Yeah, your microphone's cutting out. I don't know if you hear me. So, you said talking about the transloading, Justin. Yeah, yeah. Just not to forget transloading inland for U.S. Also, if you're trying to pick up some time. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because there are not. And there never has been enough carrier services to the West Coast, in my opinion, from the Mediterranean. So frequently we'll ship to the East Coast and rail it in or transit and truck to cut down on the, the transit time. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Uh, another question from a viewer is um, things constantly are changing in the supply chain industry and they understand there will always be some uncertainties. Um, but what they want to know is what can they expect for the remainder of 2022? <laughs> That's kind of the magic eight ball question there. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even know where to begin with, with an answer for that. But uh, hopefully we're seeing things stabilize a little more than, um, than we have in the past two years. But the one thing that I do know is that throughout this entire time, we've had to adapt and we've had to come up with new solutions and be creative to make sure that our customers get bookings. And so uh, I do feel um, that, that people should be able to work with their forwarders. And if it doesn't seem like they're coming up with new ideas, if they're not giving you different options, that's when you should be concerned. But if they are getting you bookings, if they're getting you space, and if things are going sideways, if there's strikes in, uh, on the West Coast, something like that, if they're giving you different solutions, you know, that's that's really what you should be looking for. And to kind of go on to that point, um, does Interlog do, like what does Interlog do to help like maintain some transparency with um, our customers? I can touch on that for briefly here. I mean, we've hired a lot of different positions within our organization to make sure that we're offering the best communication that we can. So um, a typical operational position that used to be just one person is broken up against multiple different areas. Uh, we have a booking manager to make sure that we're able to get bookings in place. We have uh, a lot of different, we have inside customer service reps that are there to follow and give you communication when um, shipments are, are very important to our customers and they need to know have live updates. 
Um, ben, you know, this is this is your area. You're the operations guru. So what else do you think uh, is going on there? Uh, for 2023, I want to be the one to optimistically say that COVID impacts will lessen. What we've been seeing with the congestion and the higher cost slightly been attributed to factory shutdowns and disra uh, disruptions at port loading, blank sailings, sailors that catch COVID. I am hoping that that's gonna be less of an issue every month going forward. But that doesn't discount the impact of the carrier's manipulation of the number of vessels sailing and the capacity coming across the ocean. So, Yes, rates will remain high. We won't return to the 2019 numbers, but I really feel we're gonna just keep riding the normal annual cost trends where right now market softening, rates are dropping down, spaces feels like it's opening up. And then in around June, we're gonna feel the increase up until peak season. So that's my metric eight ball. Hmm. More of the same, just at a higher level, hopefully with fewer, um, COVID-related spikes. Perfect. Well, that will conclude our Q&A. If we didn't get to your question, we'll make sure to reach out to you um, after this. But Rachel? Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Um, so just some um, updates. Next Coffee and Cargo is going to be April 20th, uh, 10 a.m. Central Time. So we hope you can make it then. Um, we do give out a monthly webinar mailing list so you don't have to sign up each month we'll put you on that list and then we actually just send you the invite every monday before the webinar so if that's something you're interested in so you don't have to constantly keep um setting up you can email myself at rachel at interlogusa.com we'll get you on that mailing list um, and then if there is a topic or a question that you guys have that didn't get answered today you can reach out to our team at sales at interlogusa.com we'd be happy to get you in touch with one of our experts to go over some topics or situations that you're, you're currently having. Um, but thank you again for uh, taking the time to listen in on today's Coffee and Cargo. Ben, Justin, Emily, it was a pleasure. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, so Thanks guys.